With fire and grace We sing your praise For you alone our God I lay my life down on the altar The present, the future, the past God, you laid all the foundations Give me a faith that lasts Consume all my heart in your presence Eternally burning in love In the Holy Hey everybody, Dalton Travis Gray here with Stones of Zion Ministries. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this channel, if you appreciate the, the bold and courageous and no-holes-barred approach that is taken here. Uh, I, I pray that in the process of all of this, you're stirred up and, and that the Lord comes in and does great surgery on your life and, and fills you with this Holy Spirit in, in a way that, that you've been needing um, and, and refreshes you, uh, freshly anoints you uh, for His great purpose in this hour. Appreciate anything that you give to Stones of Zion. It has allowed us to accomplish the things that we have been speaking of uh, with, with swift uh, resolve, and it's just so much appreciated, everyone who's given. Um, I have sent out most of those receipts as well, and will continue to if you need a tax-deductible receipt for that. So thank you, and enjoy the program today. Thank you all for coming today and joining the channel. Um, I wanted to bring a message today. Uh, some of it's going to be off the cuff of what the Lord has been speaking to me and through me, um, and some reactions to some things that the Lord has said and shown me. Uh, another is a word that I received from one of the listeners, uh, a word from the Lord. Uh, I hi highly value this word um, because it just rings so true from the truest of places in the Father. Um, not that there is any untrue. Uh, I just believe this person heard so clearly. Um, first off, I want to pray with each and every one of you. Great Father, love, wonderful, mighty King who has forever been ruling and who is ruling and who always will rule. He who owns and made all things. Him who we have life within. I call upon you and I bless your holy name. And because of your goodness, 
we know that your name has come here. And your name is Jesus. Yeshua, as some prefer. And there is none other name greater than your name. And we thank you that you have made yourself and your name known to us and that you have sojourned with us here and that you are here with us even now. And I ask that your great peace and power would be upon your people who listen to this even now. And I ask that you would speak through me and that I yield myself. Let, let me be not that you may be when I bring this message to your people and let your people be blessed in a way that they are not used to but in a way that which you desire because your ways are greater and higher than our ways I say this in Jesus name Amen so as I have spoken um, I have this word from a listener this listener's name is Carmen Campbell um, so this word was received January 4th through 8th, 2024, as dated on the email. I don't know if y'all be able to see this, but let's see if it, yeah, I think, I think it shows. Yep. All right, there it is. January 4th through 8th, 2024. This was sent and it truly it truly bears witness first off Exodus chapter 18 was placed in this word and here it goes hold up a flame of fire a torch to see by inform your people of what is to come prepare for the coming days in which each must decide for themselves on which side they are on. Prepare, make an altar to the Lord, bring burnt offerings in my name to the Lord of hosts. You will see me manifest holy fire at that altar, and many will be drawn to the flames. You are not to set up an altar to a God of war, but to a God of peace in the midst of war. Flames of tongues of fire will fill the temple, Separate yourselves. Make a holy path, my people, that you can follow in the storm. You must prepare. Take a herd of buffalo as in the old days. See them in the field. They are there for the very purpose I created them, to provide a way in the wilderness. Stretch your hand out and feel what only my people may feel, that tangible taste of freedom from all want, because I am your all in all. Step into the place of freedom, my dear ones. See my great mercy at work. I will bring many, many into the place of freedom. My daughter, do not remit, do not stand aside. Open the doors for many to come in. A day of reckoning, a day full of unknowns, you must mount an offense which will withstand the onslaught of the enemy. That offense must consist of many voices calling out for peace. It must understand what is at stake. You must use the levers of power for your own advantage. That advantage will consist of rightfully gauging risks. The risks you take must be accompanied by my power to achieve your goal. You must not attempt to use power on your own. I am the source of all power, but you must decide if that power will harm or hurt my cause. Which is the salvation of souls? Here I am waiting upon a man or a woman of God to find the courage to withdraw from worldly considerations to make my kingdom paramount in their life. Lord, is an actual war coming soon? This person's asking. It is coming with fatal consequences, says the Lord. It will come, and you must recognize your role in days to come. Preparing is a must. The course of history is determined by those who foresaw and prepared. Remember that, guys. The next months will determine the outcome of this war. March 
to your own drummer, not the world's. For the prophet, I have called you out. Wild horses run free. They are not constrained. They race across field and plain unimpended. They rush about as if a fire pursued them, and yet rarely do they harm themselves. Such is their ability to test the ground they run on. Lord, who will we be at war with? With the powers of darkness, such as you have not anticipated. I will tell you that one day you will see what has been predicted by my people, the prophets. They foresaw the events which unfold before you even now. Your heart must resist seeking the succor in the places not of me, for I will provide for my people in the midst of the raging storm. Many will cancel their plans and follow the ways of the righteous. You must lead them in that path, for their hearts will faint until they see my face. O oh, come to my storehouse, for it is full of goodness. You will be filled and never want again. Here I am waiting, here I am calling. Can you hear me? Can you see my heart breaking for this world, which turns from me and refuses my lifetime of love? Lord, how do we prepare? Prepare by first acknowledging that you need me for everything. Then ask for my wisdom to guide you. Seek me on your knees as when you first found me. I will answer the humble heart. Make war by strategic means, which I will prepare you to operate in. Those means are spiritual, not just carnal. All spiritual men will be in my army. The carnal will fall by the wayside. What a great word. Um, the, the verse comes to mind there. Uh, Cursed is man who maketh flesh his arm. And thinketh the strength of his own deeds could sustain him. Now this message uh, is very profound. It, it's literally a call to lay down your worldly plans because of the hour we're in and make his kingdom plans number one. And when I say kingdom, that does not mean the American church building. A kingdom is a domain of the king. This earth belongs to our king, and we should be claiming territory and redeeming the land for him right now. Here at Stones of Zion, that's exactly what we're doing. I want to let y'all know that in the past few weeks, all of the things I've been speaking of in the past few months have miraculously been provided for and even multiplied even more. Um, all of the people involved thus far are faithfully making decisions to uh, turn what they have into... Uh, the equity needed to move forward in this ministry, uh, and it's and it's becoming more than uh, than than I expected, uh, which is what was prophesied to me. So I just want to let y'all know God is standing behind and beside, and He's gone before us here at Stones of Zion Ministries. And I believe that if you're called to be a part of this, it will be amazing, uh, and and He will confirm that with you. Um, I would love to talk to you um, concerning, in general, the call of this word that Carmen gave. I, I believe that we're going to have to flee to the wilderness, just as the book of Revelation says, that the, the bride's going to be pursued by the dragon and have to run to the wilderness. And it is, it is in those places which we are most likely to survive and weather this storm. Our desire to weather this storm, though, needs to be for the saving of souls, which is the kingdom of God. It's the eternal kingdom. So um, it's not out of fear that we get out of the way of harm. It's for the desire to preserve life. And that is the exact reason why Noah built the ark. He, he wasn't just a selfish man. Now he had healthy fear of what's coming. That That's healthy, guys. So don't don't think that a little bit of instinctual preservation of life level fear is a bad thing. It's a good thing. It will pr it will cause you to to take action. Um, so that's a good, healthy fear um, in the sense of wanting to preserve what is good and not wanting to lose it. He did that to preserve the people of the earth, and in doing so, by his faith, um, Noah was able to do that, and he is the father of us all. Uh, another example, Joseph. 
Joseph didn't fill the barns in Egypt based on just the spirit of fear. Now, he did fear for what was coming upon the land in a healthy way. He didn't, didn't want to see the entire civilization starve to death and, and really, frankly, eat each other because that's what happens when societies collapse. Just look it up in your history books. Um, and uh, it's also in the Bible. It's part of the judgment of God upon a fallen, cursed nation um, is that they will devour themselves. Um, and it has happened in history many times. Um, so what we want to do, though, like Joseph, is we want to hear the warning and we want to obey. And, um, you know, the same thing happened with Lot. Uh, Abraham and the angels told Lot the truth about what was coming. And they didn't, they didn't respond, oh, I'm spiritually ready. I'm a God lover. God's got me. Yay, I'm going to stay right here and have faith. Mm, it's going to be great. My faith will carry me through. No, it's because he had faith in God that he heard his voice that day. And he knew God was speaking. And guess what he did? He obeyed the warning and he got out. And guess where he was at after that? He was on the outskirts of a burning city. And his wife didn't want to leave. And Jesus in the New Testament, he told us to remember only one person. He said, remember Lot's wife. When he was talking about the end times resembling the days of Noah. So... We must remember Lot's wife and understand that the comforts we have are, are, not, are not the things that should anchor us. We should be doing drastic things in these drastic times. Drastic times call for drastic measures. And if we take those measures, we might be made fun of. Um, and in this word, I loved how it said, for the prophets, you know, wild horses are meant to, to run free, unhindered. And that's exactly, that's exactly the kind of life I'm living right now. I'm doing things that no one around me understands. Don't expect them to, and I've already pre-forgiven them. I've determined to continue to forgive them for their judgment and for their suspicion and for uh, you know their ignorance. Uh, I forgive them for that too. You know, it's 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 a sad thing to be ignorant in a time like this. Um, but we are to be salvational to our brothers and sisters if we obey the Lord now. And that is the point of this word that Carmen gave. You know, uh, it, was, it was a beautiful word. There's a, there's a couple lines in there. Maybe I can scroll through and find them uh, quickly. Um, Many will cancel their plans and follow the way of the righteous. So, so your earthly plans right now, this is one of the lines in here. Your earthly plans... You know, the things, the ambitions you've had, the things that Jesus actually called his followers to leave behind. Those kind of things are, are the things that we must lay down in this hour, especially considering what's coming. Frankly, if our hearts were more pure, we would have laid them down a long time ago and trusted God. And I say that for myself, too. Um. It says in here, I, 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 I will tell you that one day soon you will see what has been predicted by my people, the prophets. They foresaw the events which will unfold before you. I, I believe that. The day of the Lord is at hand. Um, just an important point to make, and, and I have to give Joel Richardson credit for this. Joel Richardson points out in a lot of his sermons that um, the, uh, the message of Christ was spread in, in his very day, and he was validated in his very day, number one, by the power of God, you know, and the word of the testimony. But the second greatest item they were using 2,000 years ago to validate Jesus' ministry and the apostles and the disciples, all, all, everybody, the second most powerful tool besides the word of the, the power of God and the word of their testimony, um, was eschatology. They were using es eschatology, eschatological prophecies to validate that Jesus was God incarnate and that was indeed the Messiah that came and died for our sins. They didn't use apologetics to do that. Um, they didn't use, convent, like Paul said, I didn't come here with eloquent speech or ramblings of, of the wise. You know, uh, the, the, 
the truth is Paul used and quoted loads of Old Testament eschatology to prove to the Jews of that time that Jesus is the Messiah and that the new covenant had new laws and new rules, and it was a new covenant. Um, that was, uh, that's something I'm going to get into on this channel. Um, like it or not, new covenant, new rules, it does say that in there. Um, in Hebrews 8, it actually says that the old is obsolete, and it is soon to fade away. And that was Paul talking to the Jews of that day. So besides that, all right, let's see. When this person asks the Lord, is an actual war coming soon? The Lord's answer is, it is coming with fatal consequences. It will come and you must recognize your role in days to come. Preparing is a must. Wow. So we all have a role in the days that are coming. You know, I've had the honor and privilege of meeting some people in my lifetime who escaped, you know, World War II, Communist Russia, etc., etc., and these people have fascinating stories. These people, some of them did wait to the last minute. And I can tell you, you don't want to be one of those, according to these people. This has already happened in recent history. You're not above this. Not single one of you on your couch, on the other end of this camera, are above these things. In fact, we're more lazy, we're more foolish, we're more sinful. We are way more reprobate in this nation now than they even were then when these horrible things came upon them and a lot of people escaped these things and the ways they had to escape were very challenging so we all have roles in days to come um let's see there's some there's a couple other things um i like the line in here that says separate yourselves make a holy path my people can follow in the storm you must prepare Take a herd of buffalo as in the old days. See them in the field. They are there for the purpose I created them, to provide a way in the wilderness. Stretch out your, stretch your hand out and feel what only my people may feel, that tangible taste of freedom from all want, because I am your all in all. Step into that place of freedom, my dear ones. This is such a beautiful picture in this word because it's telling us to go back to the old ways. Just picture the Amish right now. Uh, put the cows in the field, live off the land. I think the reason it's referring to freedom there is because the Lord is going to give us a freedom from this cumbersome way of life, of this debt system, this horrible, this horrible, nasty, entangled mess that we've created for ourselves. The Lord is going to free us from those things. And I just want to testify to y'all that in the past week, actually a couple days ago, the Lord has provided for me a way out of my existing debts. And he is doing the exact thing that is required for this life of freedom, living off the land, living simply, all of the above. And I just want to tell you, if you go to the Lord right now, I have just seen miracles the past couple weeks in my own life. I cannot sit here and tell you that they won't happen for you. The Lord, if you go to Him pure, purely and if you ask Him to quicken you and test you and take His scalpel and cut you open and do whatever surgery He needs to to make you worthy of His purpose, I believe He'll do that for you right now. And I ask you, Lord, that you would, that you would step in and be a redeemer to these people and redeem them from their debts and, and give them a way out, Lord, before it's too late. All of those who would call upon you right now as I'm speaking, as I've shared this testimony of truth, that you would just reach out and touch these people in Jesus' name, that you would be there with them even in this moment and show them that you really are a redeemer and you really can give a coin in the fish's mouth and you really can redeem us from these things that have held us down if our heart is to serve you fully. And that's the key, guys. We must serve him fully. We must say, I don't want to live this way of life and work for this other system and get, you know, uh, riled up in debt and, and live according to the uh, dictates of other men. I want to go live free. I want to be out of debt. I want to live simply. I want to work hard. I want to live amongst my brothers and sisters. I want to live off the land. 
you know, those th- those sort of things are so honorable and pleasing to God, and they will be the reason why many of us make it to the other side of this, because we are willing to say, "I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this anymore." Uh, and there is so much hope, freedom, and life in living a life like that. And so, I just wanted to encourage you to go to go do so if you can, and and pray that the Lord would make a way for you, and I believe He will. Um, also, I wanted to share this with you. So I, I went to church today, and uh, it, it was a lovely service. It was at a at a great Pentecostal church. Love these love these people. Um, it's not my regular church I attend, uh, which is the Belonging Co in Nashville. I love that place. Um, also, you know, obviously I'm I'm being called to to start and form a church. So you know that's taken quite a bit of my efforts as of late. Um, but uh, I'm definitely not a rogue agent in the body of Christ. I, I'm very aware of what's going on in the body of Christ, and I, I look up to and, and submit to uh, leaders, uh, and I'm, I'm learning from them uh, all the time. And, and I know what I'm called to, and I know which office that the Lord permits me to sit in at times, um, and I know which office He's calling me to, and, and it's okay to know all that stuff. But I am humbly submitted to the body of Christ, and I'm learning um, always, always. Uh, the Lord is eternal, so I expect to grow in Him eternally, and I look forward to this lovely school of eternal life that we are, are ever going to be in as children of the Most High God. Oh, man, that just came out. Woo! I like that one. Um, so, I'm in this church today, sitting in the back. Everybody's starting to get emotional under the worship. I'm listening to the band. They were doing great. Um, I begin hearing the Holy Spirit and the exact words, this has happened to me, let me just let you know, this has been happening to me since I got first filled with the Holy Spirit. The Lord has spoken to me in churches, given me words for the churches, uh, had me deliver them at times, uh, had, you know, it's gotten me kicked out at times and it's gotten me, you know, highly regarded at other times. It depends on the heart of who I'm delivering it to. But I can tell you that um, he spoke to me specifically that the music and the cries of the people were so loud and distracting that he was nowhere to be heard, and they could not hear what he was saying. Let me repeat that so it can sink in. Yahuwah, the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob told me in a church building, of which he said this before, but I'm giving you an example, a testimony from today, that the music and the droning of the people was so loud that they could not hear him and they were not listening to him. I then was, you know, I'm, I'm a little thicker skinned there now. I used to break out crying when I heard those words from him. I'm a little thicker skinned, and I was like, okay, well, nothing new, Lord. This is in your word. You know, they, and Isaiah and Jeremiah and all those guys, that were, they made fun of that. They said, they're nothing but clanging cymbals, clouds without water. You know, they, they talked about, you know, how noisy and foolish the people were when destruction was upon them. So I asked the Lord, you know, why'd you show me this? And I saw overseas. I saw, you know, in, in, in the mind's eye and open, you know, just daytime vision, not anything super ultra divine, but I was taken in my sight, being a seer, to see overseas. And there, there was people getting their heads removed there was people starving to death. There was people in huts praising God, muddy, people who were muddy, people who were lacking, but they were praising God, and he was hearing them, and they didn't have any instruments, but they were just jumping up and down. He was listening to them, and he was considering all of these people being persecuted. And over here, we were just turning up the band and getting emotional, and frankly, I'm not trying to be mean or rude, but 
the emotion that these people were feeling today, they interpreted it as the Holy Spirit. And it was simply their emotions. Now, the Holy Spirit did show up later during the service. They had a guest speaker that really, really brought brought some faith to the room, and, and the Holy Spirit did move. But these people mistook the Holy Spirit, most of this service, for their emotions. And I, I witnessed this from the back of the room. Um, and I know the Holy Spirit, and I will stand by that all day. Now, there was individuals in there that the Lord was speaking to and working with, but as a whole, that church was headed for suddenly. This is the word the Lord has been giving me this past week. Many people reach out to me and ask the time frame of all these things. And I have a very educated, you know, guess that's probably more than a guess on all of this. Um, I do. But besides that educated guess, informed decision-making uh, information that I have that's based on lots of prophets, lots of words I've gotten, history study, and current geopolitical studies all combined into one. Besides that, I've been asking the Lord about time frame of when all this is going to be very blatantly obvious. And it already is obvious, let me make that clear. They're sacrificing the red heifer for sure now. That's actually happening. Um, and they got the altar ready. They've got it all ready. Everything's set up. They're doing the 50-year international UN summit this year. Israel's at war. We are likely to see the man of the hour, you know who I'm talking about, show up and broker a peace treaty with Israel at this summit this year. We're very likely to see that. Um, I, um, I'm not going to prophesy that as of yet, but I can tell you it surely looks like out of any year in global history, not, not global history, any year in world history that I've ever seen, uh, the pieces are in place now more than they ever have been. And that's, they've said that in the past a few times, but they've never been in place on the level of animal sacrifices about to resume. Once they sacrifice the red heifer and resume animal sacrifice, what do you think the Muslim world is going to do? They're going to go ballistic. Hopefully, not literally, but that is their desire, I promise you. And when that happens, there will need to be someone step on the scene and broker peace. And you know who that will be. But based on all of this, I, I've been asking the Lord, when's the timing? And this is what he said. He said, suddenly, and it's speaking specifically of America and the Western world, the Lord has said to me, and I, I know this, I'm, I'm giving a word that's already been placed in the scriptures and given through genuine prophets but I am repeating this word because I have it too from the Lord. I've heard from the same, same God, so I'm getting the same word. Suddenly is the timing of his judgment upon this land. Suddenly it will come, says the Lord, in an hour they do not know because they have not known me they will not know the hour of the judgment which I send, says the Lord. There you go, guys. There's a prophecy for you. The old school kind, the one that says, this is going to happen whether you like it or not. Not one of these words It's like, Oh, guys, goodness and grace and peace go before you, and yay, we're all going to be good because three people repented, but 300 million haven't. Yay, three people repented. We're safe. Woo! No, that's not going to happen that way. I'm telling you, thus says the Lord, suddenly it will come upon them in an hour which I have determined, and they will not know which hour 
I have determined, says the Lord, because it has been determined that they should not know. And it is only my elect which should know, and that I have chosen, and that I have spoken these things to. And my elect are following me, are they not, says the Lord? Are they not listening to me now in this hour, says the Most High God? Have they not already gone before, and no one has listened, says the Lord? Have they already gone before, and they have been thrown aside and cast out of the churches which they called temples unto me, says the Lord? Have their shepherds listened? No, says the Lord. No, they have not listened. Their shepherds have kept the people in blissful ignorance. Their shepherds have fleeced the flock. And they have taken from them. And they have not filled the storehouse. And when the hour of need comes, they will have not to give to my people. And for that I will sorely judge them. When the hour of their need comes, I will not hear them. And I have spoken these things to my prophets of old, and I speak these things to you even now, says the Lord. I will not hear them which have not heard me. I will not hear them which have not heard my messengers and prophets. I will cast them aside which have cast aside the warnings which I have given. And they will be heard from or seen no more, says the Lord. Be wise who you choose to align and listen to. Give not your substance and your tithes to those who have no intention of caring for you in the hours which are ahead. Test their hearts and test their wisdom of these times. And if they have none, then give them nothing. Turn away from them, for, the, for where will they be in the hour which you have need? Where will they be in the day which you are in pain and you are in tears? I say they will be running for the hills because these men have conspired and they already have places in the hills that you know not of because they do not want to cause you to fear and to scatter from their midst because it is you who have bought these places of refuge for these men. And will they receive you to these places? No, they will not. You will be alone and destitute in an hour of need. And they will thank me for the blessings which you gave them, says the Lord. And I will turn their substance into bitter and rotten fruit. And it will cause them sickness and madness. Because they will share in the pain of the people they failed to warn. And I will strike them with madness, says the Lord. And they will not know which way to turn. That, that all just came upon me. For all of those who think the Lord doesn't speak like that anymore, you're not only lying to yourself, you're lying, period, and you're listening to the liar. The Lord's voice is the same as it's always been, and He is the same God. And He loves us enough to warn us. And if you think that's not loving, then enjoy your Cheerios because they're about to run out. Eat extra Cheerios and ice cream for me because I'm going to leave them behind so I can go listen to the Lord in this hour with the good people that the Lord's put by my side. And I'm going to do my darndest to take care of them. So I hope this word was enough to stir you this day. 
When I was in this church, I also was given a word for the pastor's wife. And I kindly and gracefully went up to her, and the word I gave her was, The Lord has given you much sight and wisdom pertaining to what lies ahead in this world and in this country. And he has ordained moments for you to warn your congregation. And when those moments come, you're going to be tempted to sugarcoat them, water them down so as not to stir up the people, and you're going to be given distractions from the enemy to change the subject. And I told her, when that time comes, the degree that you back down from sharing the full warning message is the degree which you and your congregation will suffer when the suddenlies come that you're already aware of. And you could tell she was listening. She said she received the word and somebody had told her the same word, probably a little nicer than me, because I don't sugarcoat the words of God when I get them. I don't change them. I'm going to go with as much grace and compassion and love as possible. And I do. And I go with the power of God, mainly. I go bring it with the Holy Spirit that goes before me and touches these people. And he, and he, their, their chests heat up and they're, they feel the power of God fall upon them. They're like, what's that? I'm like, that's the Lord. Let's see what he's got to say today. And I share with him the message he wants to give me. That's, that's the, the type of ministry I've been given. Uh, it is the power of God. That's the same one the disciples and the apostles walked in. I, we should all have that ministry, and we, it's available for us. But I told this pastor's wife, I, I said that if you do not warn the people, then the suddenly will come upon you too, and you will see your people suffer, and God will hold you accountable for their suffering because instead of warning them when you had a chance to act, all you're going to be doing at that moment is reacting to the suffering that's coming because of the starvation and the inflation and, and the war and all of it that's headed this way. I, I told her that straight to her face. And I didn't say it in a mean way. And she received it because of the way in which I brought it. Now, it's probably going to cut her open. She's probably going to think about it. She might make determinations about me later. And God will judge her for whatever she determines because I went in the name of the Lord. So it is with you. Fearlessly go and do what the Lord is asking you to do in this hour. And do not back down. These actions we take are being watched and recorded by even the angels. And we will be judged by each action we take. And each word we don't speak. And each word we do speak. And I promise you this, if you speak one small word, you will add to your treasure in heaven. And as that word grows and you share a bigger one, more miracles will happen to you and more good things will come and more provisions will be made for you to escape because you're proving yourself to be worthy to escape these things. It says, pray you be worthy to escape these things in that day. I'm telling you the key to be worthy is to obey God in this warning message and do something about it for your brothers and sisters in your church. Tell your pastors, test, test them. If they call themselves shepherds, then they should, they should be subject to the test of the flock. Test them. If they're a real shepherd, their heart should be to keep you safe. That's what shepherds do. That's number one. If, if there's about to be a pack of wolves come and devour the flock, and they don't acknowledge that the wolves are coming over the hill, they're not your shepherd, guys. They're in league with the wolves, okay? Even if they don't know it, they're the wolves' best friend. They're just giving them a big old meal to feast on. 
and they're taking your they're shearing you in the in the meantime so they're they're taking off all your wool and literally skinning you for the feast of the wolves that's coming around the corner making it easy for them to eat you put your money together with your fellow christians and go buy some land and get prepared find find some crazy people that that will do it with you you will, be, you will be doing the same ministry that John the Baptist and the Essenes and Jesus and the disciples and the apostles did. If you did that, in the Word, here we go. I'm going to give you this scripture to close out on. This is Acts 2, 44 through 45. And the believers met to go, met together in one place, shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. That's in the Acts. That's in the picture of how we should be in this day. Part of the Great Commission is to leave behind this world. And in the days we're in, I, I am calling for Christians whether you know me or not, I don't care. The Lord, if he decides to lift me up, then great. If I just remain some, some wild voice in the wilderness that you may judge for this or that, that's fine too. Because what I say is pure. And it's coming from the Lord. We'll see, we'll see what happens next. I know he's doing miracles in my life and those around me. Miracles I've never seen before. It's amazing. And I have them recorded and written down here and in my journal. It's pretty awesome. But... The early Christians sold their properties. They got out of Jerusalem before it got destroyed. They got farms and homesteads, and they had a place of peace, no debt, and strength to spread the gospel from. It's a picture of what we need to do now. And if we, if we pull, say, say, say that you've got, you know, a $500,000 house, and you've got some equity there, and you've got some things you don't need, and you get together with 10 Christians right now that are willing to just say, hey, let's cash in on this thing. Let's go out somewhere where it's more beautiful. Let's, let's have a little homestead, live a little more simply, but get out of debt, get out of the system, and, and take care of each other. I know Christians that are doing that now and are successfully doing it, and I'm, I'm headed in that direction. I'm on the, on the last couple, you know, on the last leg of, of this side of it. You do that, and you're looking at tons of equity, tons of provision that God put right in your lap so you could get out before it's too late. That's literally what our move is at Stones of Zion right now, and it's happening, it's real. So I'm encouraging you, if you don't, want to call us, that's fine. But I am encouraging you guys to do it. And I'm encouraging you to think on these things. And if you're if you're if you're interested, y'all y'all give us a call cuz we're we're really we are we are headed in that direction in a huge way is actually happening and we are checking off the skilled people list of people that the Lord is sending that are just crucial. It's happening great folks. So I will say and encourage you to think on these things, to do these things as the Lord calls you. And thank you for your giving to Stones of Zion Ministries. Um, thank you for everything you've done. Um, continue to pray for us and, you know, uh, be careful who you're listening to. Critical times we're going into drastic times call for drastic measures you can choose which person you are in this story that will play out as God judges this land that's the beautiful thing you can choose may God be with you and may the Holy Spirit enrich you greatly and cause you to be the wonderful being 
that he has made you to be. In Jesus' name, you all have a great day. I laid my life down on the altar The present, the future, the past God, you laid all the foundations Give me a faith that lasts Consume all my heart in your presence Eternally burning